Welcome back to the next episode of Railway. Today will be another quick episode focusing on a specific technique, how to remove some of these compressed and warped meshes you see on some decorative networks. As you can see here, rather than uniform arches of the same shape, the segment deforms and compresses the closer it gets to the end of the node. Thankfully, there's a really easy fix for this. I call it nanosegments. It's worth noting that these only work for decorative networks. If you create segments this short on networks that carry traffic, like tracks or roads, you'll see some strange behavior, like vehicles slowing right down or even doing backflips as they traverse the tiny segment. With that warning out of the way, let's get started. To demonstrate the problem, I'm going to show you two different sections of wall, both visually the same size, but one will have the nano segment trick applied and the other won't. Any time that you have a disconnected node, you find that the mesh compresses at the end. However, the next node in is perfectly fine. Unfortunately, this is just how the game works, but we can use this to our advantage. If we bring this outer node right in close to the next node so that it's practically invisible, we end up with a clean, even, uniformly spaced decorative network. The trick is to activate Move It Snapping by holding the Alt key while you bring the node in, so this way it aligns perfectly. Now we have two different decorative networks, visually the same length, but one is made up of two segments with warping, and the other is made up of two regular segments and a nano segment on either side. The network made up of two segments has visible warping, but the one with the nano segments doesn't. This is the trick, it's that easy. Now I'm going to apply this technique to a situation that you might come across in the game, adding an elevated viaduct of track between two bridges. The challenge we have here is that the gap I'm working with isn't exactly the same size as the 64 meter long segments that I typically use. I have the node spacer mod set to 64 meters because that is the segment length Revo designed these to be. This may vary between other creators. However, that doesn't mean that you need to get stuck in situations like this. You can either change the space you're working with, or, as I'll show you now, try and recalculate what your spacing should be. If you recalculate the distances, the mesh won't have exactly the same look that the creator intended, but it will at least be uniform in shape. Use your own judgement here to figure out what works best for you. I'm using one of these large ruler props to measure out the length of the track segment. You can see me struggle to grab the prop due to the sheer size of it. Sometimes flipping it around will make it a bit easier to work with. The total length here is a bit above 140 meters. Let's call it 144 for an easy division into three 48 meter segments. When you draw out the length of the network, make sure you're allowing enough space for five segments, the three that we need, and the extra one on each side to create the nano segments. Once you've got the network lined up, use Move It Snapping to bring the outer nodes in. Hold down Alt, and you'll see that the node will slide along the line of the adjoining segment. If you get too close, you'll see the mesh on the next segment warp a little in the other direction. Just move the outer node back and try again. You'll soon find the pivot point. Having brought these nodes in, we're still off by a few meters. I'm going to move the bridge segments a little because these networks don't show the warping quite as much as the arches do. Now I've got everything aligned on one side, I can just copy and paste the decorative network and place it on the reverse. Because these arches have a fixed height of, from memory, about 9 meters, this means that there's a gap between them and the ground that we'll need to fix. 
To tidy this up, I'm using some of the plain brick walls from the same collection of decorative networks. You'll see me begin to adjust the nano segments, but this isn't actually necessary because the mesh is flat and doesn't have a repeating design. By the way, if you see a white move it selector show up during my videos, that's a shortcut that I set up for align height to object. I use it all the time to bring things in line and you can set this in the mod settings. Finally, the last thing I'm going to do is to close off the ends of this viaduct section. The pillars from this bridge are actually perfect. By using the building filter on Move It, I'm going to copy these pillars and move them into the cavity underneath the viaduct to give a stone wall effect at the bridge abutment. And there we are. Compared with what we had at the beginning, these decorative networks now have perfectly uniform arches without any warping or deformation at the ends. As mentioned at the start, this technique can be applied to any decorative network but please don't use them on actual roads, tracks, or anything else that carries in-game vehicle traffic. That's it for now. Thanks as always for watching, and I'll see you next time.